All right, kiddos, welcome back. And we're going to start a new chapter today. We're going to talk about acids and bases. I'm certain you've heard of the term acid and base before. Uh, today we're going to list some properties of acids and bases. We're going to define, actually we're going to give you a couple of definitions um, of exactly what an acid is and what a base is. And we may even get to reviewing as to how to name and write formulas for acids and bases. Now throughout this chapter we're going to talk about reactions between acids and bases and some salts that you might not think are acids and bases but actually can can act as an acid or a base. So we'll get to all of that in this chapter. We're going to start with some properties of acids and bases and we'll demonstrate these in class. Um, but for this video we'll just list them. So for acids um, one property is acids react with many metals. And you've seen this before in other demonstrations that I've done. If I take um, hydrochloric acid and react it with magnesium metal, we produce hydrogen gas. The same thing happens with, uh, with zinc and hydrochloric acid. Um, if I take silver metal, I can react it with nitric acid. We produce a poisonous brown gas. So acids react with, with many metals. Another property of acids is that they have a sour taste. Now, not that I want you to go out and taste acids. That would not be appropriate. But there are many acids that you've experienced in your life that you've tasted, maybe even on a daily basis, and you'll say, man, that tastes sour. Um, well, oftentimes those are acids. Let me give you an example. Citric acid. In fact, I have some citric acid that will pass around the room, and you guys will have the opportunity to taste some pure citric acid. You've all tasted it before. If you've had those, uh, uh, what are they called, the warhead candies? Um, there are many other candies that, that have lots of citric acid in them, and they taste sour. The Sour Patch Kid candies, I think many of you have tasted before, and they have quite a bit of citric acid um, on them. Uh, other acids that taste sour would be acetic acid. If you can think of vinegar, um, vinegar and oil salad dressing, that sour taste is from the acid acetic acid, which is commonly called vinegar. Uh, we have phosphoric acids in our cola beverages. Um, yogurts have lactic acid in them. If you've ever tasted plain yogurt without all the fruit added, there's that sour taste to it. That's lactic acid. So acids have a property of tasting sour. And then, that's, uh, and then the last property I want to list that's pretty common is they turn blue litmus paper red. And you can see that in the illustration that I have below. If I take this blue litmus paper, this paper's normally blue, if it comes in contact with an acid, it turns red. And so that's something that acids can do to litmus paper. Litmus paper obviously has a chemical on it um, that changes color um, based upon the pH of the solution that it comes in contact with. Alrighty? Bases. Um, bases, a uh, few properties, is they have a slippery feel to them. Now that's another thing that I probably don't want you to go around and start, you know, going through the chemical supply cabinet and um, playing around with some uh, bases and saying, "Man, you, Hummer's right; those those do feel slippery." I don't need you to do that. Um, but in the lab, um, you may have had some dilute sodium hydroxide spill onto your hands, and before you washed it off, you may have felt uh, the slippery feel. Turns out that bases are really good at dissolving protein. And when they come in contact with your skin, they can do that. And that's that slimy, slippery feel that you feel when you contact uh, bases. Another property is, and once again, I don't want you to go tasting a bunch of bases, but bases taste bitter as opposed to sour. Uh, I suppose if you've ever tasted soap before, it's a bitter taste. Not that you want to go wash your mouth out with soap, but, but that's what I mean by a bitter taste. 
And then the other property I want to list for bases is that they turn red litmus paper blue. So if we have some red litmus paper and that comes in contact with a base, that red litmus paper will turn a blue, pa uh, blue color. Now, by the way, um, once the red is turned blue, that blue part is now considered blue litmus paper. So if this comes in contact with an acid, it will turn red. And sure enough, this over here, my blue litmus paper, which turned red, that red portion is now considered red litmus paper. And if that comes in contact with a base, it'll turn back to blue. And we'll demonstrate that in class. Alrighty. Now a few definitions. Um, probably the most common definition of an acid or a base is related to the Arrhenius definition. It simply states that an acid is a substance that contains hydrogen and ionizes to produce hydrogen ions in solution. A base is a substance that contains hydroxides and these dissociate to produce hydroxide ions in solution. So for instance, if I had hydrochloric acid and I dissolved it in water, it would produce hydrogen ions and chloride ions. Because it produces hydrogen ions, hydrogen chloride, when dissolved in water, would be considered to be an acid, hydrochloric acid. Now similarly, sodium hydroxide has this hydroxide group att attached to the sodium ion. And when that dissociates, it produces sodium ions and hydroxide ions. Now because it produces hydroxide ions, it's considered to be a base. And let me give you a couple more examples while we're here. Um, here's another one, HNO3. Now, nitric acid will dissociate to produce hydrogen ions and nitrate ions. Because it produces hydrogen ions, it's considered to be an acid. And one more example, if I had barium hydroxide, and I dissolve that in water to produce barium ions and hydroxide ions, because it produces hydroxide ions using this Arrhenius definition, we would call it a base. Now that's the most simple definition. It doesn't cover all acids and bases, but, but it works most of the time. Now the definition that we're going to use in this class that is more widespread is called the Bronsted definition of acids and bases. Technically it's the Bronsted-Lowry <laughs> definition of acids and bases. Um, it is proposed that, um, well, it, it focuses on the fact that uh, hydrogen ions can either, either be donated or released by a substance or accepted by a substance. So it turns out an acid is a hydrogen ion donor and a base is a hydrogen ion acceptor. Now, what does that mean? Well, let me give you a generic example. Let's take HX and we will place it in water. Now, X has this hydrogen ion stuck to it. That hydrogen ion is donated to water and water turns into the hydronium ion, uh, H3O positive, and the X turns into the X negative ion. Notice that this guy here, HX, donated a proton to water. It lost that proton to water. And since it lost or donated that proton to water, it can be defined as an acid. Now, interestingly enough, interestingly enough water in this case is considered a base. Why? Yeah, if you think about it, didn't it go from H2O and it accepted that proton to become H3O positive? Since it accepted a proton, it's considered to be a base. Now, this reaction, you see the arrows going both ways. That means it reaches equilibrium. Let's erase some of this. And let's look at the other side of the reaction and see what happens. 
Um, if we go backwards, the H3O plus ion ends up losing a proton, doesn't it? Doesn't it turn into water? And in that process, it lost or donated a proton. Who did it donate that proton to? That's right, the X minus turned into HX. So it accepted a proton. So X minus in this case is considered a base, and H3O positive on the other side is considered an acid. Now since they're on the right side of the equation, we call them conjugate bases and conjugate acids. So a conjugate acid is the species produced when a base accepts a hydrogen ion. I'm going to say that again. A conjugate acid is the species produced when a base accepts a hydrogen ion. The base water accepted a hydrogen ion from the acid HX and became the conjugate acid H3O+, which now has the ability to lose or donate a proton. A conjugate base is the species that results when an acid donates that hydrogen ion. Whatever's left over is considered to be the conjugate base. So let me give you, instead of a generic example, a real example this time. Here is hydrofluoric acid. It begins as the HF molecule. When placed in water, this hydrogen ion is donated to the water molecule and I have the F negative ion that's produced. Since HF donated a proton, it's considered an acid. Since water accepted that proton and became H3O positive, it's considered a base. And we produced the hydronium ion H3O plus. Now, of course, when the reaction goes the other way, the H3O plus loses a proton or donates it to F negative and that makes H3O plus the conjugate acid, and F negative, when it goes backwards, since it accepts a proton, is the conjugate base. Here it is using molecular models to illustrate what's happening with that proton. H2, uh, 2Hs and an O becomes 3Hs and an O. So that accepted a proton, so water's the base, and since HF lost or donated that proton, it's considered the acid. Here's another example. Um, ammonia. Now normally, if you would look at ammonia, you'd say to yourself, well, using the Arrhenius definition, that's not an acid. It doesn't produce hydrogen ions. And it's not a base because it doesn't have hydroxide ions. But what it ends up doing is it gains a proton to become the ammonium ion. It accepted a proton. See, it had three hydrogens. Now it has four. It gained or accepted a proton. And according to the Bronsted definition, we call that substance a base. Well, where did it get that proton from? Yeah, when I placed it in water, water became the hydroxide ion. It lost a proton. It didn't really lose it. It was donated to NH3. So since water ended up losing or donating a proton, it's considered an acid. Now on the other side of the equation, if we go back this way, you can see that ammonium, NH4+, plus, turns into NH3, so it donated a proton, so it's called a conjugate acid. It's on the right-hand side of the equation. And the hydroxide ion gained that proton to become water. Since it gained a proton, it's considered to be a base. Since it's on the right-hand side of the equation, we call it our conjugate base. Okay, hopefully that helps. Let's do a couple quick examples, and maybe we'll end with these. So let's see if you can take a minute, maybe I'll do the first one for you actually, and identify the conjugate acid-base pairs in each of the following reactions. So we want to identify the acid and base on the reactant side, and the conjugate acid and base on the product side. Okay, like I said, I'll do the first one for you. So let's see, NH4+, plus, it has four H's stuck to that nitrogen. It turns into NH3. Looks like it lost a proton. NH4 plus to NH3, so this is my acid. Okay, OH negative. OH negative turned into H2O. It gained that proton from NH4 plus. Since it gained or accepted a proton, this is called my base.
Now, let's look at the other side of the equation. If we go backwards, see how the arrows go both ways? If we go backwards, NH3 turned into NH4+. Plus. It accepted a proton. So since NH3 accepted a proton in the backwards reaction, it's considered a base. Since it's on the right-hand side of the equation, we call it the conjugate base. And then for water, H2O on the product side, well, it went backwards, and when it went backwards, it turned into OH-, minus, so it donated or lost a proton, so that's considered an acid. Since it's on the right-hand side, we call it the conjugate acid. Okay, why don't you try uh, labeling B and C, uh, label the acids and bases, and conjugate acids and conjugate bases, then come back to the video, and we'll see how you did. Alrighty? Okay, welcome back. Let's see how you did on letter B. HBr became Br negative. Hmm, looks like a proton was donated or lost. So this was my acid. H2O became H3O plus, so it accepted a proton, so that is my base. Going in the other direction, the H3O positive became H2O, it lost or donated a proton, so this is my conjugate acid, and Br negative became HBr, it accepted a proton, so that is my conjugate base. Did you get that one right? All right, let's do the last one, letter C. CO3 2 negative. Didn't that turn into HCO3 negative? And in the process, it accepted a proton. So CO3 2 negative was my base. Well, where did it get that proton from? That's right. H2O turned into OH minus. It donated a proton. It got rid of one. So, this is my acid, according to the Bronsted definition. On the other side, you can see the HCO3 negative becomes CO3 2 negative. So, it donated a proton. So, this is my conjugate acid. And OH negative became H2O. It accepted that proton. So, this is my conjugate base. Okay? Now, if you, if you lost a little bit, go back and rewatch the video, see if you can figure out what an acid or base is, and how we can identify acids and bases, because on your next assignment, and probably on your next quiz, you're going to have to do that. Alrighty? Alright, thanks for being with me. See you soon. Bye-bye.